Until recently, the inverted spin was the great bugaboo of most pilots. All too often, they have cracked up or bailed out unnecessarily because they didn't know how to recover or because they were too scared to be effective. But actually, recovery from an inverted spin is often more certain and more rapid than from a normal spin. Although there is a definite restriction against spinning naval aircraft in the inverted position, this has been lifted in the case of the M3M3. When checking out in inverted spins, the best method for entering the maneuver is from the half loop position. But before beginning the loop, be sure you have an altitude of at least 5,000 feet. Set the elevator tab to make the plane tail heavy. This promotes ease of recovery from an inverted spin, just as a nose-heavy setting promotes ease of recovery from a normal spin. Drop each wing in turn and look down to be sure no one is below you or anywhere in the vicinity. In a spin, you're completely out of control and can do nothing to correct a collision heading. Also, Swing your nose out of the way to be sure no one is beneath you off the 12 o'clock position. When you are sure all is clear, drop your nose and pick up 100 knots for a loop. When the plane's nose is about 30 degrees above the opposite horizon in the inverted position, ease the stick forward to keep you in the inverted position. Bring the throttle almost all the way back and wait in that position until she is almost ready to stall. Then, snap the stick all the way forward and kick rudder in the direction you want to spin. In recovering from an intentional spin, you already know which direction you're turning because if you kick left rudder, you're spinning to the left and vice versa. In an accidental spin, the turn indicator needle will tell you if it indicates you are spinning to the right, for example, you kick hard left rudder. Wait just a second, then snap the stick all the way back, hard, and hold your controls on full until she stops spinning. Immediately she stops spinning, neutralize your controls. With the stick a little forward of center, to hold her nose down until the wings have had a chance to regain their lift. point, the oil pressure will be so far below normal that adding throttle would damage the engine. Watch the gauge and don't add throttle until the pressure starts to rise again. There are a number of mistakes which are frequently made in entering and recovering from inverted spins, but they are easily avoided if you know what they are. For instance, as you prepare to enter the spin, you wait until she has dropped to just above stalling speed. You can feel it when she's getting ready to stall. But if you wait too long to apply the controls, or if you don't bring the stick straight forward, she'll slide off into an inverted skidding spiral, losing altitude much more rapidly than in an inverted spin. Perhaps the most common of all errors in recovery is failure to pull the stick all the way back. Spinning in the inverted position, you have both centrifugal force and gravity pulling you away from the controls. And unless you watch it, instead of pulling the stick all the way back, you will find yourself trying to pull it out of the socket. So, snap the stick all the way back and hold the controls full on until she stops spinning. When she stops, some students will invariably fail to neutralize the controls. This brings the plane up sharply, so she stalls out into a normal spin. Controls should not only be neutralized, but the stick should be moved up a little forward of center to keep the plane's nose below the horizon until the wings have regained their lift. Mistakes are frequently made in inverted spins because in the inverted position, the pilot becomes confused as to which is right and which is left. And yet there is no reason for confusion. 
right remains the pilot's right and left is the pilot's left, regardless of whether the plane is upside down, right side up, or vertical. If the needle says you are spinning to the right, you kick left rudder and vice versa. If in an emergency you cannot use the needle, look at the plane's nose. If it is turning to the right, kick left rudder and vice versa. Never forget that your nose always follows right rudder to the right. The plane is in normal attitude. Or if it is inverted. If you pull the stick back, the nose will always come toward you whether you are inverted or right side up. And if you push the stick forward, the nose will always go away from you. The inverted spin bears some relation to the normal spin in that any plane that is difficult to spin may also be difficult to bring out of a spin. The higher altitude at which the plane is spun, the more difficult it will be to bring it out. An increase in altitude has the same effect as an increase in wing loading. But the inverted spin differs from the normal spin in that recovery from the inverted spin is often more rapid and more certain than recovery from the normal spin. Occasionally, in the early stages of a spin, an inexperienced pilot is unable to determine whether he is in a normal spin or an inverted spin. The sensation of being thrown away from the controls is a certain indication that the spin is inverted rather than normal. If the spin is accidental, you will first have to cut the gun. Look at the turn indicator needle to see which direction you are spinning. Kick hard opposite rudder. A second later, snap the stick all the way back. Don't just try to pull it out of the socket. As soon as you stop spinning, neutralize rudder and bring stick a little forward of center to keep the nose below the horizon until the wings have had a chance to regain their lift. Then bring the stick back slowly and ease the throttle on very gradually to prevent engine bearing damage. The inverted spin is no longer a bugaboo. To the pilot who is thoroughly acquainted with a simple technique for recovery, it is scarcely of more consequence than a normal spin or an Immelman turn. <laughs>